You give life, you are love, you 
So as uh, Maria made mention, we know that uh, the longer that this crisis lasts, the more it is affecting in the deeper ways into our community and our church family. So again, know, as Maria mentioned, we are available to talk. If you have needs, please don't hesitate 
to lay those needs before our church. Again, we want to help. We just need to know how. And so often, uh, we are a proud people, and it's hard to us to ask for help. But thankfully, in today's psalm, we're going to learn about what that looks like. But let's spend some time before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you a people exhausted. Lord, emotionally, spiritually, financially, Lord, with so many of our members getting furloughed and laid off and the anxiety of what life will look like after this crisis has subsided is becoming a real intangible need in our lives. Lord, we are overwhelmed by it. And so, Lord, whether it's parents trying to figure out if we have a phased in to our jobs, what happens to our kids not having school or many daycare options available? whether it's losing loved ones to this virus or other ailments because elective surgeries have been postponed. Lord, there's just so much. Lord, we think of our business owners who have done everything they can to try and keep employees on the payroll so that they too could meet their financial obligations and provide for their families, but the, the future's unknown. Lord, wherever we are at on that spectrum, Lord, take those heavy burdens that are overwhelming us today as we take them off our shoulders with your help, Lord, and lay them before your throne. Lord, you are our God, and you listen to every word that we say, but we cry out to you collectively, but also as individuals, for help during this difficult time. And while the best thing for us to do is to come to worship, Lord, maybe there's some people at home that just maybe didn't really feel like turning on the computer and maybe are sitting there frustrated and angry, feeling like you haven't heard their cries for help. Lord, we know that feeling. And we know that as a people, we come together this morning to declare that you hear our cries for help. So Lord, we know that in this past week, we've made some choices that we regret. And we know that we have sinned against you and fallen short. So Lord, we confess those sins to you now. Lord, we know that you are mighty to save us from all that hinders us, but we know that sometimes your timing is different than ours. And so, Lord, we do pray that you would give us the patience to wait on you to move in our lives. Lord, as we again move into another psalm today, I think it's so timely that you've chosen this psalm for us today because it pictures a person surrounded by countless frustrations and anxieties and crying out for help. Lord, we want this to be a cry of our hearts this morning as we dig into this psalm that you inspired David to write. Lord, we want to be your people, and we know that it's hard during a crisis to think through how we could shine your light into a dark place. And so, Lord, not only show up in areas of our family, our business, our friends, our family, but also, Lord, even in this moment, we want your presence to be so real and tangible wherever we are, Lord, that uh, you give us that courage to not only get up in the morning, but to walk victoriously, knowing that you hear us when we cry out to you. So may your spirit open up our eyes as we open up your word now, uh, soften us and, and prepare us to be encouraged, knowing that uh, when we cry out to you, you never turn a deaf ear to us. You never remain silent, and so speak to us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, kids, again, now would be the time that you would come forward, and you need to know that Pastor Maria and I truly lament not having all of you up here. It is just not the same talking to a camera. And so as I continue, and Maria and I continue to, to pray through what we need to do each week, I was led to a psalm, another song written by David. And if you didn't know, before David was ever a king, before he, he probably even wrote any psalms, he had a job, and it was a very important job. Madison, can we see that first line? Here, kids, this is, this is a hint as to what was his first job. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take, uh, raise your hand if you know what this is. Uh, yes, you over in your pajamas over on your couch, yeah, what, what is it? That's right, he was a shepherd. Now this particular shepherd, it was given to us by Maria's parents, and it sits on our mantle where that picture up on the screen was taken. And you'll notice very quickly how the shepherd is holding this sheep 
in his hand. But one of the things about being a shepherd is it's hard work. And so I created a video. So especially younger children, you want to get close to the screen. So here's a hint about what this video is all about. Madison, can we have that? Brian, would you mind zooming into this week's hint for the children what the video is going to be? Notice you see a child that is, is covering his eyes and, and perhaps he's counting, uh, I would assume. And then you see some other kids that are uh, running away. K kids at home, Brian, are we good? I hope you know what game we're going to play in a moment. So get ready and watch this video. Hello, I'm on a sheep farm in the highlands of Scotland. Now being a shepherd is a hard job because sometimes your sheep like to hide. Have you ever played hide and go seek before? Me too. Would you like to help me find one of my sheep who needs some help? Really? All right, get ready, get close to the screen we're going to play a game of hide and go sheep. All right. When you see the sheep, point to the screen. Here we go. Do you see him? There he is. All right, let's try again. Do you see him? Point to him. There he is. All right, one more. See him? There he is. Good job. When a baby animal needs help, it will cry out for help. And so watch what happens when a family from church learned how to talk to some baby animals. friend Brian zooms out and gets the camera angle properly. A special thank you to the Martin family who were gracious enough to show some footage of how their kids interact with some new pygmy baby goats. Weren't they cute? And so kids, we hope that you had a good time watching that video as we talk today about what it looks like for a child of God to cry out to God for help. So good job listening. All right, so for everyone else, if you could open up your Bibles to Psalm 28, that's where we are going to be today. And so during this spring season, Marie and I thought it would be appropriate to look at a number of psalms that are very timely when it comes to the needs of the human heart, because the psalms have this amazing supernatural ability to communicate the deep longings of the human heart, even when we don't know what to say. And so this spring series is called Psalms to Sing When We Don't Know What to Say. And so each and every psalm is unique in that the Lord inspired its authors to communicate something that humanity often wrestles with. This week's psalm is no different. But as you think about calling in for help, we understand that we live in this day and age where if we need help, we could just call 911 and some of the wonderful dispatchers at Van Buren County are going to pick it up and help us out, whether it's a fire or there's some danger or perhaps there's another emergency, maybe a health emergency. And so imagine for a moment 
you in desperate need of help, and yet you call the 911 dispatcher, and they're so overwhelmed by all of the people having a crisis, there's just not enough people to answer phones, and when you call, what you get is silence. How would you feel if you cried out for the Lord and heard nothing? Well, that's what the psalmist is trying to wrestle with. He is in desperate need of help, and he cries out to the Lord to find help during his time in trouble. And so keep all this in mind as we take a look at today's passage. It will be up on the screen. Psalm 28. To you, Lord, I call. You are my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me, for if you remain silent... I will be like those who go down to the pit. Hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help. I lift my hands toward your most holy place. Do not drag me away with the wicked, with those who do evil, who speak cordially with their neighbors, but harbor malice in their hearts. Repay them for their deeds and for their evil work. Repay them for what their hands have done and bring back to them what they deserve because they have no regard for the deeds of the Lord and what his hands have done. He will tear them down and never build them up again. Praise be to the Lord for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song I will praise him. The Lord is the strength of his people, a fortress of salvation for his anointed one. And so save your people and bless your inheritance. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. And so as you heard the words of that psalm, it gives us this picture of a person who in the middle of his time of need cries out to heaven for help. Now oftentimes when we pray or in worship, it doesn't just involve our minds, but it involves our heart, our emotions, but it often involves our bodies. And so what we see in the psalm is this picture of when someone is in desperate need of help, when we think of a prayer, oftentimes, you know, we teach kids when they're little, okay, we're gonna pray, so what do you do? You bow your head, you close your eyes, and you fold your hands in reverence to the Lord. And I'm not saying that that's wrong, but that is not the picture we see in Psalm 28. We see this person who's surrounded by anxieties and troubles and enemies, and he chooses to stand on the rock that is the Lord, and he cries out to heavens at the top of his voice, saying, Lord, I'm calling to you. Do not turn a deaf ear to me. In, in other words, he wants to call out to heaven, and he wants to make sure that in all of the many things that God is in charge of over all creation, he doesn't want his voice to be drowned out and fall on a deaf ear. Because he points out that if the Lord doesn't speak to him, if God was to remain silent, it would be the equivalent of him dying. Because remember, God's word is the bread of life. It is the, the lamp into our feet, and God's people need to dig into God's word, especially during a time where they need help. And so instead of this picture of, okay, I'm going to pray to the Lord, no, no, no. We see this person, hands raised to heaven, saying, Lord, please help me. Again, if you have children or grandchildren, you know very vividly the image of a child who's maybe fallen down and skinned their knee or is really sad. And when you look down to comfort that child, what does that child do? That child lifts their eyes, tears in their, their, their eyes, and, and they, they lift their hands up saying, please pick me up, give me comfort. We all know that image is ingrained into our mind. And so that's the picture we get from David. He's got his hands raised to the heavenly father saying, please help me, carry me through this difficult time. And in the middle section, starting with verse 3, we see a description of some of the enemies that are causing the psalmist this anxiety. And, and again, it was people who kind of pretended to be God's people but really weren't. 
And I was thinking about this particular section. Now, in this corona crisis that we are in, oftentimes we need help. So let's say we bought a new piece of computer equipment that isn't working right. Let's see our utility bill seems a little bit high. Or perhaps we're struggling to pay our mortgage. And so what do we do? We call the 1-800 customer service helpline of all of these businesses. But if you've tried to call any of those 800 numbers lately, this is probably what you got. And so you picked up the phone and you hear ring, ring, ring. And this is what you hear. Due to unusually high call volume, we are experiencing delays longer than usual. Your call is important to us. Please hold on the line. We will answer your call in the number it was received. Your wait time is 45 minutes. We appreciate your patience. And then what do you do? You sit there on the phone and you listen to the elevator music in the background that drives you nuts and you wait 45 minutes to finally talk to an actual person. Now, if you are in the need of an immediate help, how frustrating would that be? But even more frustrating is you've talked to one of your family members and said, well, I actually got in and it only took five minutes. You're like, what? That's exactly what David is asking. Even though it might not seem fair, David is asking that when he gives his call to heaven to help, that his call for help will bypass everybody else, all those wicked folks waiting in line, and that the Lord would disregard the heathen prayers of his enemies. Again, when we need help, there's an immediacy that we want to cry out and have someone respond. That is what David is asking of the Lord. But when you get to verse 6, I don't know if you noticed as I was reading it, we once again have this dramatic shift. David's needing help. He's crying out to heaven. He's surrounded by all these anxieties and stresses. And then all of a sudden, thank you, Lord, for what you did. Now, again, there's nothing there. It's almost like David very intentionally left out the how God saved him and answered his cry for help and how long he had to wait. Was it 45 minutes or was it 45 days? We don't know. Again, that's because the Lord wanted this psalm like this to be applicable for many different situations. And if the psalmist was too specific, it wouldn't fit so well with the time period that we're experiencing. But you'll notice he uses the past tense in verse 6. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. And scholars don't know, was it so much faith in David that he was crying out to the Lord in anticipation of help coming? Or did this occur after the help arrived? We don't know. It, it either is, is absolutely correct. Why? Because the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him. Why? Because when I cried out to help, he helped me. And then my heart leaped for joy. As, as Maria pointed out, and I'm so thankful that the children's ministry staff are checking in on our kids. You need to know that one of the motivators for Maria and I to get up on a Sunday morning and to put this on is anticipation of all of these kids coming back in here leaping, literally, for joy in the presence of the Lord. That's what keeps us going. And that's the picture that we see in the psalm. That the psalmist leaps for joy with the song of the Lord that he will praise him. And then he goes from focusing on his own needs now to corporately. The Lord is the strength of his people, a fortress of salvation for his anointed one. Now, two things here. So much of our life and our sense of security is based on our environment. And right now, with so many people losing their jobs and being put on furlough, that's an added anxiety because we're wondering, how are we going to pay for our house? How are we going to pay for food? David's message to us is that the Lord is our fortress, no matter what storms or battles we may be facing. But then he points out the anointed one. And we have to remember, oh, yeah, David was an anointed king. And, of course, that also points out to the son of David, Jesus, whose name means salvation, the Christ, the anointed one. And so again, it points our hearts and minds to Christ, our Savior. And then finally, the psalmist cries out, Save your people. Bless your inheritance. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Maddie, can you go back to that picture of the shepherd? Again, 
I believe it, Maria, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't your parents give this to your siblings as a wedding gift? Uh, engagement. engagement gift, okay? And so each of Maria's siblings and their spouses were given this shepherd. And again, it's important for Wayne and Chris that this shepherd is displayed somewhere in our home because it's a constant reminder of how when we are in trouble, when we are going through difficult times, the Lord, as we saw in Psalm 28, is like a shepherd who carries us like a lamb. And so as you think back to that children's illustration with the kids, I just want to again say thank you to the Martin family, specifically the older girls, as they are training their pygmy goats well. And the idea for this was that uh, we had a wonderful ministry team leaders meeting this past week via Zoom, and we were praying for all of you. And, and Dan Martin asked if we could stay on a little bit because he was talking through how this is all going with streaming and the equipment and so forth. And I, and I, and I said, you know, I need some animals for, for this, and it would be great to have this year. So just as a joke, I say to Dan Martin, who's on a Zoom call, I said, you don't have any baby sheep, do you? And he said, just a minute. And he goes running out of one room, and he comes back, and what is he doing? He's holding in his arms, he's carrying in his arms this little, cute, baby, pygmy goat going, meh, meh. And I said, oh. Perfect for this week's illustration. And so again, thank you to the Martin family for that video footage. But as you think about it, thanks, Matt, you could take that down. But as you think about what it means for us to cry out to the Lord, I want you to, in your mind, think of all of the times that you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling scared, you know, perhaps you have a loved one who just passed away. Maybe that person stood up in your wedding. Or maybe he or she is as a great aunt or uncle that have, have lost their lives and you're just feeling so overwhelmed. I want you to picture God as that shepherd that holds us when we need help, that picks us up and carries us. And so as we think to how this psalm also points us to Christ, we remember that Jesus yet again uses this picture of a shepherd and brings even greater meaning. So Madison, can we see that? This passage that we're going to look at just briefly as we close things out was when Jesus was surrounded by all of these religious leaders that wanted to kill him, much like the wicked described in Psalm 28. But Jesus says, very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. And here it is. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. Think of that video where one of the Martin children were going Meh, and those little goats responded. It's the same way for us that the Lord hears the voice of his people. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out just like we saw today. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him. Why? Because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. And then later, Jesus is even more clear describing who he is, saying, look, I am the good shepherd. Why? Because the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And so as we close out, Brian, if you want to start zeroing in on the shepherd on our mantle. We know that this is hard, folks. We know that this is difficult. But I want that image of a shepherd carrying the sheep in his arms to be that picture that carries you through this day. Because we know that when we cry out to the Lord... He hears us. So in a moment, I'm going to pray. And then Marcus was gracious enough to provide a song of response for us uh, that is along with this theme that we are carried by God. But please play with, pray with me now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for this wonderful psalm that gives us a song to sing when we don't know what to say. Lord, when we cry out to you, we use our entire body because we know 
that from your heavenly throne you see and hear us. You never turn a deaf ear to our cries for help. And Lord, thankfully, not only do you know our voice, but when we hear your word speak to us, we hear your voice in that. And so, Lord, wherever people are at in this morning, whether it's tears falling down from their eyes even at this moment because they desperately need you to carry them through this difficult time, or someone who is continuing to have anxiety about the future and the days to come and the uncertainty that's come with this crisis, Lord, we want this day to be about remembering how you carry us like a shepherd would carry a sheep. And so, Lord, may your spirit just powerfully ingrain that image that we've seen in your word today into our minds so that when we feel alone and we feel surrounded and we feel overwhelmed, that you remind us to say, no, I'm carrying you through this and I'm going to be there to the end. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Please stand with us.
much for joining us. We know this is really hard. And for some people, this is unbearable. And we recognize that the same deep longings that you're experiencing right now, whether you've lost a loved one, you've lost a job, and you don't know what today or tomorrow will hold, we know that there are psalms like Psalm 28 that we could sing, and they never fall on deaf ears. The Lord hears you, and he wants to scoop you up in his arms like the good shepherd he is. And so hear God's blessing as we leave this place. May the love of God, our Father, the grace of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, and that comfort that comes with the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you now and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.